Well, Khair, what I want to focus on, like I said, is one aspect, and that is the aspect just of sabr and patience. Just to understand patience is something small. We hear it, sabr, sabr, sabr. But what does it mean? Generally, when we hear a sabr, we, what is the first thing that comes to our mind? You broke a leg, but you make sabr. One guy, right, his father passed for someone going, oh, no, you just make sabr, just make sabr. Well, of course I'm making sabr. Yeah, but what, what does it mean by making sabr? Okay, so like I said, right, is that sabr are basically are three types. You have as-sabru ala al-masa'ib, as-sabru ala ta'ad, as-sabru anil ma'asi Allah. Okay, or anil ma'asi. So we have three types or three levels or three categories of sabr per se. Number one, which is the common, generally understood one. So how many categories of sabr are there? Three. Okay, good. So we're all following. Three. Number one, what we generally refer to as sabr is as-sabru ala al-masa'ib. So patience in the face of adversity. You're afflicted with something, patience. You break a leg, just as an example, patience. You physically harm, patience. Financially harm, patience. Mentally harm, patience. These are what we generally refer to as a sabr or sabr. Okay? And understand these halat go up and down. And there may be, in your understanding, no logical reason why it should be happening, but this is all the system and the nizam of Allah. Okay? Now remember one thing, and now this is the, the litmus test to test whether it's beneficial or not. If you have a musibah that comes, a difficulty that comes, a test which comes and it draws you closer to Allah, then that test was really beneficial. Why is it beneficial? Because why are you sent in this world? For which reason? To earn the pleasure of Allah. So by having a musibah, if you turn to Allah, oh, Alhamdulillah. You know, going back a little while ago, there was this guy, I don't know if you guys followed it, but he actually died of cancer, a brother from Australia. Multi-millionaire guy, but then he was afflicted with cancer. He developed cancer, and then he passed away. And when someone asked him and interviewed him, "What have you got?" He goes, "Alhamdulillah, you know, I have cancer. Alhamdulillah, with the grace of Allah." And what, let me make this very clear: a Muslim, Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal, we praise Allah in all conditions. Meaning, not that I ask for musibah, I don't ask for taklif, but if it comes, all praise be to Allah. He knows what's best. Do you understand the difference? We're not thanking Allah, Ya Allah sent more musibah, of course not. But when a musibah, a difficulty, affliction comes, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal, I praise you in all conditions, whether if it's sarra wa dharra, in happiness, in, in, in misfortune, in, in, dis, in, 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 in good, in bad, in affluence, in poverty, I'll always make shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank Allah. Because if one thing has gone, Allah has given us other things. Let's just say financially you suffered for whatever reason, but physically, mashallah, you're very healthy. Someone physically may uh, suffer, but financially he's very well off, or vice versa. Or someone, for example, phys physically is okay, but mentally not well. Someone mentally well, but physically not well. Everyone, I'm telling you, by Allah, no one, no one on the face of this earth, nobody who you look at has a perfect life. There is no such thing as a perfect life. Everyone you see, by oxen billah, they're gonna go through some form and shape of difficulty. What happens is because you're going through a certain difficulty, you seem to think, why is that person not going through that? Why is he not going through that? Why me? Because you can't see what they're going through, but you're going through your own challenge. They're going through their own challenge. Someone, for example, may have their bag of issues. You have your bag of issues. Nobody, nobody is test free. Remember that.